Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Illini Fieldhouse, where tonight the Division Three sectional finals take center stage as the Ottawa Glendorf Titans battle the Elmwood Royals. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Jerry Snodgrass and our entire WSN crew. And, Jerry, this matchup on paper, it looks like Ottawa Glendorf should roll, but it's tournament time. Anything can happen. On paper. And, you know, that's one of the things when you talk to coaches that's a whole new excitement. Yes, Elmwood has struggled a little bit this year uh, overall and in their conference both, but talk to Coach Ty Traxler, and he is every bit as confident if they keep in the game, it can be a game. Well, let's take a look at the keys for the Elmwood Royals to pull off the big upset. Well, first of all, especially with the pressure of Ottawa Glendorf, they've got to protect and take care of the basketball. Two, they really need to limit their runs. I think that's something when you're a coach, you know they're going to happen. There's no question OG will be it, take, they'll take their runs, especially defensively. But you've got to limit them. You'll see a timeouts used a lot. You'll see them try to slow the game down a little bit to prevent that. And thirdly, when you do have the basketball, you need to be efficient. And, and that's something that Elmwood will do. And, Jerry, for Ottawa Glendorf, their kids are not naive to understand. They are the favorites in this game. 19-3 and on the season, a spectacular season once again. What do they have to do to keep the composure, stay focused, and win the game? Well, you know, first of all, every player follows social media and every player reads, you know, the stuff. They've got to stay focused in the game. And I think the first probably four or five minutes are key on that. Two, do what they do best keep the pressure on. They're very dangerous in that half-court trap once a ball crosses midcourt. And three, they've got to keep the ball away from Elmwood's leading scorer, Cade Lentz. It's the tournament trail right here from the Elida Fieldhouse, and we'll have all the action right here on WSN. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's sectional final between the Elmwood Royals and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Tonight's Scoreboard sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of their structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, division of the Alts, seamless spouting. So, Jerry, uh, uh, you look over at the Ottawa Glendorf crowd, and they've pretty much taken up one side. Elmwood, just a little bit smaller. Yeah, you do see a lot of coaches and officials in the stands tonight. Oh, excuse me. I'm just kidding on that. <laughs> no, you see a very, very loyal supporting group. Always has been, and uh, they're very good. They're very supportive. Let's take a look at Elmwood tonight. They come in at 7-16, and 2-12 and 12 in the Northern Buckeye Conference, and their starting lineup will look like this. They'll start... Number zero, Landry Seedorf is a freshman 5'11 at 1.2 a game. Number two, Will Harrison is a 6'3 senior at 2.5 a game. Number three, Cade Lentz is a 6'4 junior at 16.9 a game. Number 12, Hayden Wickard is a 6'4 senior at 10 points a game. And rounding out the starting five, number 31, Zach May is a 6'0 senior at 2.8. For the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, they come in with a spectacular 19-3 record, 9-0 in the WBL. They are coached by Tyson McLaughlin. And they have had a fantastic season. Let's take a look at their starting five, Jerry. They'll start number three, Grant Schrader, a 6'1 junior at 3.9 a game. Number 11, Theo Mag is a 6'7 senior at 12.5 a game. Number 21, Hunter Steckschulte is a 6'2 senior at 8.5 a game. Number 22, Colin White, 6'6 junior at 20.5. Number 24, Caden Erford is a 6'4 junior at 13.7 a game. So, Jerry, as we said a little bit earlier, oh, let's take a look at the officials tonight. A.J. Kramer, Tony Schwederman, and Daniel Cook will be officiating tonight's game. As I said earlier, Jerry, the, on paper, this is this is all Ottawa Glendorf, but you and I have seen enough high school basketball to know that anything is possible. I've watched games in this field house where, where the underdog has absolutely controlled the game. Yeah, and you know if you're a coach, if you're a tight trackster for Elmwood, you know, he, he knows that. He knows that he's outmanned. He knows that, sure. you know, his players do. But his philosophy and his goal, keep in the game, and you never know. Absolutely. We just stay in the game, shorten the game the best you can. That's where coaching really comes in. Yeah. And, Jerry, before we get started, I want to say we, are, we have got a huge schedule for the next couple weeks at WOSN. Folks, if you have the inkling to donate to the station, that would be fantastic. We bring these games to you, but we also look for donors for the product, and uh, I think we do a great job. You know, not <laughs> only that, but I think we do a very good job. WOSN does a good job of bringing the communities you know, the, the best, you know, the, we, we emphasize the communities. We often hear about it takes a village to be successful. We, we emphasize that with our schools and with our, our communities. Absolutely. You saw Tyson McLaughlin there getting his kids pumped up. As, as, the, as the favorite in this game, you obviously want to get out and flex your muscle a little bit. You do, and that's something that, you know, he wants right from the start. 
You know, one of the things I just love about Tyson, and I know a lot of people don't see this, but I look at good practice coaches. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and how that focus here started earlier in the week. So here we go. We are underway for the sectional championship here in Division Three from the Elida Fieldhouse. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass bringing you all the action tonight here on WSN. Titans will go down low. Ball slips out of the hands. It's recovered by Elmwood. So, hey, if you're looking for That's a good right. start and you're an Elmwood Royal fan, you, there you go. You, you can look at every pass game for Ottawa Glandorf, and I will tell you, every first possession they're going inside. So they'll, here's Elmwood. They'll go back on the other side. Ball gets trapped in the corner. They'll go back out. You know, I talked about their efficiency on offense, and even there, he didn't have a shot inside, so he just backed it out. Landry Seedorf, he realized, you know, probably get it blocked. I'll just bring it back out. We'll get a good offensive look. And the Royals are led, Jerry, by Cade Lentz, a 6'4 junior, and he is two points away from 1,000 for his career. There's a steal by Ottawa Glander. They'll go down the middle, and uh, Colin White is fouled on the play. Yeah, and you know, that's something on turnovers, whether they're in the full court, whether they're in the half court, whatever it might be. They get a turnover, they're going, and they're going aggressively to the basket. There we see it, good pass. Just a little too far underneath. So Colin White will go to the free throw line. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So White hits the first one. And, Jerry, if our viewers haven't had a chance to look at Colin White, he is spectacular. He's one of the best players, not only in Northwest Ohio, but in the entire state of Ohio. You know, you're right. And I could have really emphasized that in pregame. At the same time, he's such a team player and makes so many other players good around him. Well, Coach... Coach McLaughlin said this week that when they are playing their basketball, he is distributing the ball and everybody is getting involved. And there is another steal on the off, on the defensive end. So here come the Titans. They'll bring the ball down the floor. Ball goes to the corner. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Goes back out to the Titans. Take it back up. Ball's off the mark. <laughs> another Titan rebound. That's two in a row. And they knock it in. Hunter Stecksholdy, the 6'2 senior, gets the easy bucket. And, you know, right after that basket, you know, you see that full court pressure just, you know, op or taking place. When they get across this side of the court, they're going to trap that first pass on the quarter court. So the Titans are in a press here. This is Cade Lentz with the ball, the 6'4 junior. And here's a shot from the top. Ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. It goes out of bounds. And it looks like Hunter Stecksholdy tried to grab it. It goes off of an Elmwood Royal. Well, you know, the tough part right now, you know, I realize we're only two minutes into the game, but, right. you know, at the same time, you know, two turnovers in the offensive end already and also giving up a couple of offensive boards. So OG leads 4 nothing on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Steck Schulte with the ball. He goes to the corner. They'll swing it back up top to Mag. Mag will swing it to the right side, and we've got a foul underneath. Let's see who that foul is on. It's on number zero, Landry Seedorf. You know, on, on the offensive end for, for uh, Ottawa Glandorf, you know, Theo Mag, you know, averaging a little 12 and a half a game, but I love the way he plays all over the court. I think he's just a, a real big factor for them. There's a three ball from the right side. And they do that a lot, Jerry. They will knock the three ball down if you give them space. Ball goes inside, goes off the mark, rebound comes down. This is May. May tries to take it back up. Got a little pressure there. I thought he was going to get called for a push there. He saw his elbows extend a little bit, but instead they've got Theo Mag on the foul. Well, and even there, you know, look at him battle back for that. You know, he thought maybe he was going to get fouled on the first one, but just kept after it, got the offensive board, and right back at it. There you saw the instant replay there. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. So this is Zach May, the six-foot senior, averages 2.8 a game. He goes to the line for the second one, and he knocks it down. Seven to two on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Hunter Stecksholdy. He'll go to the corner. He'll swing it around. Gets the ball to Grant Schrader. Schrader with a little jumper. Goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. It goes off of Stecksholdy. And they're going to They're going to say it stays. Oh, no, they're going to say Elmwood got the ball. Yeah, and the punishment of that is you take out against that full right. court pressure. <laughs> There's a nice pass down there. Gets the ball to May. May goes down low, takes it up. Ball is blocked. Theo Mack does a great job of walling up. And uh, Theo Mag, the 6'7 senior, that's a tough customer to try to shoot over top of. Yeah, and just look how he keeps that ball up after a rebound. So strong. So White goes into Mag. Mag's guarded by May. Goes to his right. Kicks it back out. 
Dribble drive to the middle. Hunter Stick Schulte. Ball goes off the mark, and here go the Royals out and running. Nice job by Cade Lentz, the 6'4 senior, knocks it in. And Elmwood's down 7-4. to four And am I right? Outdoor. That's his 1,000th point on the year. That is his 1,000th point. Congratulations to that young man. And the uh, Elmwood fans are very appreciative of that. Yep. Quite an honor. If you really stop and think about that, you know, a thousand points in your career, and even the Ottawa Glendorf people are commending him. I, oh, this what, is awesome! That is, look at that standing ovation. You want to know what sportsmanship is? Right there, it Jerry, is. Jerry, I got goosebumps. Just I, do too. I mean, this is great. Look at the OG crowd. Yep. And, oh my goodness! So Cade Lentz, and he's only a junior, Jerry. Yep. Yep. That's, that's he's got a you know another year ahead of him. So. And they're a young team, the Elmwood yes, they team are. is. They've got a freshman, they've got a junior. Uh, they're, they're a very young team. So there's a nice alley-oop into Colin White. He lays oh, that man. in. Colin White, the 6'6 junior. You see his athleticism there. And OG leads 9-2 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. They're going to stay in that press. Here comes Cade Lentz up the left side. They'll go to the middle. And Landry Seedorf, the freshman, gets it back out to Lentz. And Lynch is going to try to add to that total. So there's a foul at the foul line there. And you know, really, on the offensive end right now, Elmwood's oh, doing a good job. They They're are. not forcing it in. They're, you know, when they get in there, they think it's going to get blocked. They back it, back it out. And that's the process of trying to keep the game close. There we see the pass going, what looked to be open, but ended up being a foul. And the foul's on Levi Underbrink there. There's a three ball from Lynch from the outside. Rebound comes down, and the rebound is snagged by Dave Westrick. As he'll kick it back out. Thought about taking the three, but he'll dribble drive to the middle. He'll get it back out to Stick Schulte. Stick Schulte's man kind of fell down. There's a three ball from the right side, and it's good. Caden Nerford, the 6'4 junior sharpshooter at 13.7 a game. And Jerry, when he gets hot, brother, he can light it up. You know, I don't know how many times I'm going to say this, <laughs> but they have so many weapons. So there's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here on the booth. Out of a Glendorf leads 12 to 4. You're watching High School Basketball on WOST. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. So Coach Traxler takes a timeout. Obviously, they don't want to have those big runs that you talked about yeah. earlier. Limit those runs. You know, you know the other thing is you, you slow the game down a little bit that way, and uh, you know, that's part of the thing. You know, sometimes you substitute at a free throw uh, when you when they're going to take the ball out. Just slow it down a little bit. This is Cade Lentz with the ball. He'll swing it to the top of the key. Shot on the way. Goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down to the Titans. That's Dave Westrick, 6'6 junior, gets the ball. And now we've got a charging call. And you know right now, I look at the Royals, Elmwood's doing what they need to do. Absolutely. You know, they just, their shots haven't fallen on the offensive end for them, and they've done a very good job. There you saw the Beckman Jewelers instant replay there, and they had Hunter Stick show on the charge there. Elmwood win bounds under the basket. There's a steal from out top. There's Colin White with the ball. He goes up. Ball goes off the mark, and it looked like Cade Lentz slapped the ball, and it went out of bounds. It'll go back to OG. So difficult to stop Colin White. You know, you, you know he's, he misses a shot, but he just he gets it off in traffic that you just sometimes can't imagine. Well, he's you know he is so good at going to the rim. He's six six, and he's just so athletic, and he is everything you want in a high school basketball player. Looks like the ball went off of yeah. his foot, but they're going to say it went off in Elmwood Royal, and they are pleading their case yeah. to no avail. So See, even right now, that substitution right there. It slows the game a little bit, you know. It just, it again, will it work? I don't know, but it's something you have to do. You have to pull all stops out. Entering the game for Elmwood is number 23, Jackson Childress. The 6'2 senior comes in. And there's going to be a foul, and looks like they're going to get Landry Cito for the foul, the freshman. <laughs> we talked to uh, Andy Hobensack, the head coach of Riverdale, who Elmwood beat earlier this week, and he came over to us pregame, and he said, you know, Danny, he said, I'm looking up at OG's crowd, and he said, I'm not real sure how our kids would handle this, just walking <laughs> in and seeing this massive crowd from OG. And, and he's got a great point. Yes. And, uh, the, you, you know, his team is young, and it, it is very intimidating when you play a school with the tradition and the power that OG has. You know, I think when you talk about, you know, 
if you've coached, if you've been around it long enough, you just use the words tournament time. Yes. And all you have to do is take a picture of the Ottawa Glendorf crowd, and that, that defines it. Absolutely. Caden Erford with the ball out top. He tries to go into White. White's double teamed at the elbow, and he'll take a little turnaround jumper. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Royals. That's Hayden Wicker, the 6'4 senior, grabs the rebound. He gets the ball over to Cade Lentz, and they'll set it up the top. Lentz is guarded by Levi Unterbrink out top as he looks to go one and one. 12-4, Ottawa Glendorf leads here on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Danny Hilbert, Jerry Snodgrass from the Elida Fieldhouse sectional final basketball. Nothing better, Jerry. Nothing no, better. I'm telling you, if you're a hoops junkie like we are, this is the best time of the year. So it looks like Elmwood throws the ball away and it'll go back to Ottawa Glendorf. Unforced errors, Jerry. They can't have unforced errors. I think that's their fifth turnover, too. Yeah. And I think, you know, most of, most of them were unforced. And, and you know, there's a great shot, Jerry. You look at Ty Traxler. He knows the situation. Yes, he does. And he is coaching his tail off. I absolutely love that. Uh, he's an Ada High School grad, and I know the family, and, uh, I, you know, he's done a great job at Elmwood. So well-respected, also the principal at Elmwood. Yeah, that's right. You don't know when you don't know, Jerry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes Elmwood down 12-4. They'll bring the ball up. This is Cade Lentz out top. He'll go to the middle, and there's another turnover from Elmwood as he tried to push the ball down to number 11, Andrew Traxler, the 5'7 sophomore. You know, I had a real closeness with uh, Elmwood, with the Royals, you know, a few years back when we started the Golden Megaphone. And their student section was just so incredible. Small, because it's a small sure, rural school. Sure. But boy, they were into it all the time. And I really miss that. Uh, uh, Mrs. Brunswick there deserves a lot of credit for what she's done there. There's a three ball from the left side, goes off the mark. It comes down to the Titans. That's another offensive rebound. They get another possession out top. Three ball from the right side. Ball is up, and it is good. Grant. Splish, splash, number three. Grant Schrader knocks it down, and he makes it 15-4 to four on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Well, that's the third player that's hit a three, so you can tell. And I talked about Theo Mag being so dominant in the inside. So, you know, again, talk about the versatility of a team. Yeah, and there's Theo Mag with a the foul there, and they really haven't pushed the ball down low because no. they haven't had to. They're getting good looks. Their defense is creating offensive opportunities. Yeah, and that's part of the reason. I think they're they're sagging inside so much to stop Theo Mag, and then, you know, good ball reversal, good crisp passes, ends up finding someone open on the perimeter. This is Hayden Wickard out top. He gets the ball over to Lentz. Lentz is guarded out top by Hunter Stecksholte. I'll go back to Lentz, and there's another turnover, and that's number seven on the night already here in the first quarter. So. Well, you know what goes back? The last two turnovers, one of the keys to the game, I said for Ottawa Glandorf, uh, Coach McLaughlin said, keep the ball out of Lentz's hands. Absolutely. And both times they've denied that, and it's ended up being a bad pass. They're doing exactly what he wants them to do. So here come the Titans down on offense with 1.20 to go here in the first quarter, and there's a foul down on the baseline. OG leads 15-4. to four. Danny Holbert, Jerry Snodgrass, sectional finals from historic Elida Fieldhouse. Jerry, I couldn't tell you the number of great games I've seen in this place, and it is it is spectacular to be back here. Admittedly, I haven't been in here for a while, and it just, like you said, I have such great <laughs> – well, not all of them are great memories. I coached here. <laughs> right. Oh, I've had plenty of losses yeah, here too yeah. with schools that I've uh, represented. So said that when I went to uh, – Delphus not long ago, too. There's a nice steal and a give and go, and Hunter Stecksholte cuts to the basket and gets the deuce, and he gives the Titans the 17-4 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. The Royals will come back with a long throw down the field. They get the ball to Jackson Childress as he tries to go down on the baseline, and he's cut off. They'll get the ball back to Lentz. Lentz is guarded out top by Colin White. As it should be, the two top yeah. players from each team. I like to see that. I, I really do. So don't just think that Colin White is an offensive no, machine. No, he gets you after know, it on defense. Yes, he does. So we're down to 33 seconds here. And there's a five-second call as Hayden Wickard had the ball out top, and he was tightly guarded, and they get a five-second call. It'll go back to Ottawa Glendorf with 32 seconds to go. And through that first quarter, you really have to look at how much of Ottawa Glendorf's 17 points have come from the defensive end. Yeah, they get after it on defense. And that, that press, and really what that press did, they didn't get a whole lot of steals, but it sped Elmwood right, up. Right, right. I think a lot of people think, you know, a, a press is always <laughs> right. to steal the basketball. It isn't. No, it's no. to force unturned, or excuse me, un unforced errors. Um, yeah, just it, changes the complexion of the game. Steck Schulte gets the ball over. He'll get it back again in the corner. This is Steck Schulte off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Titans. They'll put it back up, 
and they'll miss that shot. So after one corner from the Atlanta Fieldhouse, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans lead the Elmwood Royals 17-4. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. Well, Jerry, right now, Ottawa Glendorf's not showing them with a lot of love. They're really getting after them with defensive end. Yeah, if you're in that timeout right now in between the quarters, if you're Ty McLaughlin, you're, you know, one of the things you're saying is you're not focused on what you really need to stop. You're just focusing on let's keep doing what we are doing because we're doing it on the defensive end. Everything else happens. So, you know, obviously a good situation to be in. Jerry, if you're Ottawa Glandor, what is Tyson McLaughlin saying to his kids to keep them focused? And I think he does a great job of that. I, I do too. And I think all you have to do really is look at their players on the court. You don't see a lot of emotion out of them. Sure. You know, you see a, a straight face. They're businesslike. They are. <laughs> and I think that's where I go back to, you know, there. I know there are a lot of great coaches that sure. do this, but what a tremendous practice coach. Yeah. And I will tell you this, too. You, some people might laugh at this. Principal out of Glandorf is Ann Ellerbrock. The whole school environment is that way. I, I know that. I know her. That's fantastic. And as a result of that, you get just – that's what you get on the court. So here's Elmwood down 17-4 to with 7.51 to go here until halftime. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from the Elida Fieldhouse Division Three sectional finals. And they are really pressuring them man-to-man. -man. And not allowing them to get to the rim. They play really good help defense, and they really adjust and rotate the way that they <laughs> you, you see. And there we go again. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, I know you get frustrated if you're on with, even though they don't show it. And I'm I'm glad sure. to see that. But at the same time, it's just like another one of those. You know, I say unforced, but that's exactly it, what it it's is. What it is. So here's Hunter Stecksholy with the ball. Colin White triggers the ball in from the side, from the home side. They'll go inside to Mag, and a great job, excuse me, Dave Westrick with the deuce, and a great job by the 6'6 junior to cut to the rim, and he makes it 19-4 to on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. They get a lot of minutes out of Dave Westrick. He is an unsung hero on this team, Jerry. Yes, they do. Only average, I think, about 2.5 a game. But. And there you see Cade Lentz, the 6'4", 1,000-point scorer for Elmwood, as he knocks down the triple, and he closes the gap at 19-7 to on the Ultimate Scoreboard. There's a dribble drive, number three for the Titans, Grant Schrader. And Jerry, I'm, I'm calling everybody's name here. It's just amazing how yeah, they get each other involved. Yeah, I go back to the offense of that three by Lentz, and you know, you look at him at being how you know tall he is. Are we ever going to see the foul inside that? And really, in all honesty, what a good job that time, you know, by uh, uh, Grant Schroeder, Schrader of, of drawing that foul. And Schrader. But, but Lentz uh, does yeah, such right. a good job. Uh, he's, he's tall, he's lanky, he's got a great looking shot. He does, and Schrader misses the first one there and keeps it at 19 to 7. So the second one on the way. And that one rims out and go back to Elmwood. So here comes Lentz as he's double teamed. He'll get, to get it out, go across the timeline. There's a nice dribble drive. Shot goes up, and a nice job by number 12, Hayden Wicker. The 6'4 senior uses all of his height to go up and get the deuce to make it 19 to 9 on the ultimate scoreboard. Titans will bring it down, looking for White down on the low post. White with the ball, gets it inside. Oh, off the backboard, goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it's going to stay with out of the land door. So they'll run Colin White on the outside. They'll run him down the low post. They're, oh, they're going to say it goes to yep. Elmwood. So Ottawa Glendorf stays in that man-to-man -man press. Wickard with the ball out top. He's guarded by Westrick. Wickard brings it up, gets it across the timeline, and get it over to Andrew Traxler. Yep. As soon as that comes into that no man's land there in the corner, they're just on them. Well, you saw Traxler make the big mistake of turning his back, and as soon as he did, they double teamed yes. up on the high post. So they're going to do that every time. Got a chance to talk to Andrew Traxler here before the game. Nice young man. We were going over names with him. Nice job of Lentz to sneak on the backside. They try to get the ball in, and he misses the shot. Here come the Titans on the outside. This is Hunter Stickshorty with the ball. He'll go dribble drive to the foul line. They'll go to Colin White on the high post. White takes it inside, kicks it back out. They'll go left side. Hunter Stecksholdy from three land off the mark. Rebound comes down to Lentz, and there you saw Boy, Lentz. Boy, you sure <laughs> did. He got way up there, Jerry. You know, Lentz is a first-team All-Northern Buckeye Conference player, second-team District 7, and you can see why. Absolutely. The junior average is almost 17 a game. And he is the focal point of this offense. This is Wickard with the ball at the foul and gets it inside. 
The shot goes up and it goes way off the mark. That was number 23, Jackson Childress, the 6'2 senior. Oh, Orlando just presents so many problems to yeah. you, Jerry, on the defensive end with their height. And you, you watch them, their players. They move their feet, not their hands. They right. get in really good position. They're just so well coached. Yes. You look over there at Tyson McLaughlin, his dad, Kevin McLaughlin, longtime Miller City head coach. And, you know, that, that, there's a lot of wins on that bench. There sure are, you know. And like I said, I go back to, you know, the focus that they have all week long in practice. And I know every, every player does. But sure. When I say this, but they just love playing. They just love the yeah. game of basketball. I mean, I. Well, you see it in the community. You, all you got to do is look at the crowd yeah. and understand the passion these folks have for this game. So this is Stick Shoulder with the ball up top. There's a nice cut. They find back door and they knock it in. Nice job by number 10, Brad Mag, the 6'2 senior. And there's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. We're watching high school basketball. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the high distributor of the Structure Pergola X Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. So another timeout on the floor. Uh, Elmwood trying to keep it close, but OG with a 21-9 lead. Doing exactly what they want to do, capitalizing everything off the defensive end. And, you know, you know, you just talked on that last one. I think it was uh, Brad Mag, I yes, think, Brad Mag. scored that last one. You, you mentioned it, too. You're calling everyone's name. <laughs> But sure it's are. like everyone plays their role so well. They absolutely do. And, and it's it's nice. And, and uh, head coach Tyson McLaughlin talked about it on the radio interview this week. They are at their best when Colin White doesn't have to score 30 and they can get everybody involved. And this is a great uh, representation of that. And they're, they're distributing the ball. They're defending well. And uh, overall, just a great performance by the Titans right now. Yeah, you look at a Colin White, and I, you know, I would tell you right now he can average 30. He could average sure. 30 anywhere. He averages 22 a game, I think, somewhere around in there, if I'm not mistaken. He no, does. Just slightly under 20, yeah. 21. Yeah, 20.5. But, but it's just because they're so balanced, and that's how you win ball games. Absolutely. So it looks like a kick ball there. It'll go back to Elmwood. They'll take it out in front of their own bench. They'll try to get the ball into Lentz. Lentz is guarded by Stick Shorty out top. I think you hit the key word there on an out of bounds. They're going to try to get the ball in. Yeah. And Lentz goes to the right, to the left side, excuse me, and as soon as he gets there, he's double teamed and he knocks the ball out of bounds. It'll go back to the Titans, another Elmwood turnover. Ottawa Glander pushes the ball into Colin White. Colin White looks for the cutter and a nice backdoor cut by number 24, Cade Nerford. And not only is he a sharpshooter, he understands how to get to the rim. Well, and that's one thing he, uh, Coach McLaughlin did focus on, I'm certain, is the number of times that they put Colin White in the paint. You know, he's going to get triple teamed. Somebody's open, and, you know, your player like Colin White, you're going to find him. Absolutely. This is Traxler with the ball down, down low. He gets it out top. There's a near steal. No, he got a steal. This is Steck up the right side. Gets it back on the left side. Oh, with a nice block there by Hayden Wickard. And he blocks the ball on number 24, Caden Erford. Shot goes up, and that's going to put Wickard at the Lee's famous recipe foul line. Boy, give out Elmwood credit. They just keep playing hard. There's just, there's no, they, they don't quit at all, and you don't see the hanging heads or anything. Absolutely. Good yeah. steal here. So Hayden Wickard goes to the foul line, the 6'4 senior. We'll go to the line for two shots. First one on the way, and it's good. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Big Theo Mag comes back in the game. <laughs> they interchange 6'6 six, six for 6'8, six, 6'8 eight, six, eight for 6'5. Yeah. So it's a great luxury at Ottawa Glendor. So with 4.15 to go on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard, the Royals have closed the gap to 23 to 11. Ottawa Glendorf brings the ball down. They'll go to the left side of the floor. This is Mag with the ball. And there is a collision out top. And they're going to say Colin White with, a, with an illegal screen out top. You know, I have to admit, I love the way Elmwood plays. <laughs> I really do. They do things very, very fundamentally right. Well, I heard uh, Coach Traxler on a radio interview this week, and he said that they had a game plan, and they just they want their kids to execute the game plan. Good or bad, whatever happens, happens. But they want their kids to execute the game plan. So this is Cade Lentz up top. Gets it over to Wickard. Ball goes out of bounds again, so there's another unforced error. 
Just that's that's the hardest thing, you know. I don't. We do, I think, because we've coached for so sure. long. But I don't think a lot of times people see how difficult it is to make a pass when you've got hands <laughs> everywhere. Absolutely. Stick Shorty with the ball goes back to Grant Schrader. They go inside to Mag, and Mag tried to get position inside Theo Mag, the six-seven senior, and he gets fouled. And that's going to send Theo Mag to the line for a one and one. Theo Mag, the six-seven senior, averages 12.5 a game, and he is a vital part to this team, Jerry. He's had a really nice season. When I was watching tape on them, you know, and as I mentioned, almost every first possession or two of a game, Ottawa Glandorf was going inside to him to establish that game inside. Yep. Just like a football team, if you run to set yep. the pass up, it's exactly what they do. And there you see Cade Lentz go. knock down the triple from the left side. Cade Lentz has got eight to lead the Elmwood Royals, and it makes it 23-14 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. There's Mag again, looks inside, he'll kick it back out. This is Steck Shorty with the ball. Guarded by Griffin Piper. They'll go back to Colin White. He goes left side, and wow, <laughs> he went across over to the left side, Jerry. That was as quick as a cat. And how he avoided that <laughs> offensive foul was amazing. Here's Lentz on the left side. Dribble drives to the foul and goes up. Theo Mag blocks the shot, but they're going to say he stepped out of bounds on the other side. So 2.56 to go here in the second quarter. The Ottawa Glendorf Titans lead 23-14, to trying for another sectional championship. You know, just think right now, if you're uh, Coach Traxler, you know, you're closing in on halftime. Anything can happen. You're only down nine. I, I was, you know, Jerry, when I you're said that score, nine. I thought the same thing. It feels like it's more, but you're only down right. nine. Here's Ottawa Glendor. I know that can change in a heartbeat, but at the same time, sure. you know, you look at the turnovers they've had, and that's something that they're going to have to stop. And there you see number 12, Levi Unterbrink, the 6-1 senior, gets behind the defense and scores the easy bucket. Ottawa Glendorf stays in that press. Here comes Elmwood down 25-14. Cade Lentz up top, thought about taking the three. He's guarded by Hunter Stickshulte out top. Yeah, and Levi Unterbrink, you know, 6-1 senior. Now he's in the book. You know, Absolutely. how many of the players are in position there's another steal position. this is Erford with the ball goes to Colin White Colin White goes in and they're going to say Colin White with the charge so Colin White gets another foul and that's his second on the night and you know what I, I, I give a lot of credit obviously give credit to the defense obviously you do but just the way that they pressured him a little bit you know I think he wanted to get himself open and he was just going to put his shoulder down and sure. do it and there's another near steal by the Titans, and they are really amping the pressure up as Elmwood's having trouble getting the ball in. And when they do get it in, they're being trapped on the sides. Let's see what they can do here. 2-10 to go, 25-14 OG leads. And there, there's a yeah, foul I here. did not I'm see. Not, yeah, I'm not really sure. I was watching the ball being in bounds, but I'm not real sure who the foul was on. I, don't, I think it was on Will Harrison, but I don't think he knows what he did either. <laughs> Will Harrison, kind of puzzled by that. 6 3 senior, gets the foul. And so they're going to take him out of the ball game as uh, he uh, walks off a little gingerly. You hope he's okay. Yeah, and I think he just, I, th I think I could read his lips. He says, I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, Colin White swings the ball around. This is Erford. He'll swing it back around, dribble drive to the foul line. They'll kick it back out. Hunter sticks, Shoddy. Now, you, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, Colin White and Theo Mag and Hunter Stickshulte is kind of the glue guy to this team. He's, yes, he, he is. He runs the offense. There's a three ball from the left side. Goes off the mark. Hunter Brink gets his own rebound, gets it to Colin White. Colin White takes it inside, and he scores. Colin White with a nice dribble drive of a baseline. It makes it 27-14 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, that's, you know, give up the offensive board, and sooner or later you're going to pay for it. This is Griffin Piper double teamed up top. And they're going to say a held ball as Piper tried to get out of that double team. But OG does a great job. And they kept their composure there, Jerry. They kept their hands high. They, they did everything that you, you coach your kids to do. Yeah. And it's easy for me to sit here and say, don't pick the ball up sure. in that area. But you can't help it. <laughs> right. This is Steck Shorty with the ball up top. He'll swing it to Colin White on the cut. And Holland White takes the shot. It goes off the mark. But he'll go to the line for two. 
Tell you, that's one thing. Colin White has had to work he sure so has. far in this yeah. first half for his points. He sure has. He'll go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So White knocks the first one in. He has seven points here in the first half, and you know three of those have come from the line. Right. And he's had to work for it. Absolutely. Second one on the way, and he knocks that one in. So with 1.17 to go here until halftime, the Titans lead 29-14. Brad Mag, I think, comes back into the game here. And again, they they just they rotate their players so well too, and they all complement each other. Yeah, they've played ten here in the first half, and uh, they've all contributed here. So tracks are double teamed in the low corner. They get the ball out to Lentz. Lentz streaking down the side, takes it inside, and he scores. There you saw how quick Cade Lentz is as he gets to the rim and he knocks it in. He's got ten to lead the Elmwood Rose. They're down 29-16. Tell you what, that was a tough shot too. It you sure know, was. Believe it or not, he was going full go and. That's tough. That's it. Tried to push the ball down to Caden Erford as he went to the low post, and there's going to be a foul. The foul is on number 11, Andrew Traxler, the 5'7 sophomore. So that'll send Caden Erford to the line. Erford's got five on the night. First one on the way. Knocks that in. Ottawa Glandorf as a team shoots 73% <laughs> from the line. Uh, great percentage for a team that shoots really well from the outside. He knocks in the second one, makes it 31-16 on the ultimate structure scoreboard. Yeah, you know, you get into tournament play and you start talking about, you know, some statistics, you know, I remember Bobby Knight used to say statistics are for liars, you know. Right. You can make anything of them. I come tournament time, though, you start looking at those free throw percentages. You start looking at certain percentages. And I will tell you this, I love the analytics that coaches today keep on their scores. Oh, absolutely. Number of, you know, percentage of out-of-bounds plays they score yep. from. And that's something that we didn't have. <laughs> that's right. Ottawa Glander pushes the ball down to the low post. Ball goes off the mark. Colin White with the rebound, and he steps out of bounds. So... Ottawa Glendorf getting good shots, getting towards the rim. But uh, Colin White steps out of bounds, and they're going to let Colin White take a seat. And they'll bring in number 12 for the Titans. That's Levi Unterbrink as he enters back in the game. So 41 seconds to go. OG up 31-16. There's a double team in the corner. They get the ball out. This is number 22, Zach Gross with the ball. Gross gets it back. Dribble drive to the middle, shot goes up, goes out of bounds, and there you saw number 12, Hayden Wickard, try to get to the rim, but the ball just goes out of bounds. But you know, even there, he altered his shot a little bit because he's just waiting, just waiting for somebody to come up and bat that thing away. So Colin White will trigger the ball right in front of us. Hunter Stickshoulder brings it down with 25 seconds to go. I would assume they're going to hold for one as they don't look very in a hurry here to take the shot, up 31-16. You know, they average 67 and a half a game. They're right on pace right for that. Right on pace, you're right. Offense, offense, offense. Stick shorty goes to Erford. Back to Erford, six seconds to go. Erford with the drive, back to Colin White. Colin White from the three ball from the corner. That's way off the mark. Rebound comes down, and it's off the mark. So after one half a play from the Elida Fieldhouse, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans lead the Elmwood Rose 31 to 16. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So back here at Elida Fieldhouse for second half action. And Jerry, you look at the first half, and Elmwood turned the ball over a lot, didn't get a lot of second chance points. They're only down 15, and their kids are playing incredibly hard. They are. And you know, I kind of watched Ottawa Glandor. I watched the Titans walk into the locker room, and you know, you're up 15. Sure. But you didn't see this. You just saw like this is this is frustrating a little bit, sure. you know. And and you know what? Credit Elmwood for that because they're playing so hard and making them work for everything. Absolutely. And we talked about Ottawa Glendorf before the break, and we talked about Colin White. And I think he had a great observation. He's really playing hard, and Elmwood's really digging him up. Yes, they are. And you know, anybody going into a game against them, anybody would say, well, you have to stop Colin White. Well, you also have four Easier other players. Easier said than or done. Better yet, right. You have about seven or eight of them all together, no matter who's in the game you're going to have to stop. So, again, I give Elmwood a lot of credit for that. So Elmwood will take the ball out in front of the OG home crowd. 
Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from the Elida Fieldhouse Division III Sectional Championship on the line. Ottawa Glendorf Titans Elmwood Royals. This is Cade Lentz, the 1,000-point scorer. He got his 1,000 points in the first half, and he ended up the first half with 10 points to lead the Royals. So he gets the ball out top. He's guarded out top by number 21, Hunter Steck, Shorty. Three players have had the ball, and two of them. And there we see You know, that, the yeah. ball was bobbled, or, you know, and not because they made a mistake, sure. it was because of the defense, and an errant, errant pass. So there we see another turnover by the Elmwood Royals. 31-16 on the Altman Outdoor scoreboard. This is Steck Schulte. They'll go Steck Schulte, Mag, White, Erford, and Schrader. They're starting five. They'll go back into Mag. Little turnaround right-handed jumper goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Zach May. And the Titans stay right in that man-to-man -man press. As they Go and right after the freshman, Jerry Seedorf. Yes, and you know, <laughs> what a nice move inside that time by Theo May. You know, officially, by the official statisticians, we have Elmwood for 18 first half turnovers. That's, that, that's, that's tough. That is really tough to get out of that. And Jerry, there you saw right here, Theo Mag. Look yep. at the athleticism yep. of the 6'7 senior. Yep. He does a great job of going towards the rim. So he'll go to the Lee's famous recipe foul line. First one is up, and it is good. So Theo Mag. How good is it when you can let your 6'7 player handle the ball like that down through the middle? Absolutely. And We'll take a look over there. His dad sitting there, just as proud as a peacock, and he should be. Theo's a fine young ball player, and he knocks the second one in. Theo's got two on the night, and OG takes a 33-16 lead with 7.07 to go in the third quarter. There's a pass down the left side to Lentz, and they go, he'll go straight up, and he's going to be fouled, but a great job of getting to the rim by Cade Lentz. He's, he's got a lot of length, Jerry. He, he's really smooth on the outside. Yes, he does. Manages, you know, handles his body well to, you know, get to the basket, but also draw the foul. You notice how many times against that pressure that they've thrown that full court press. They uh, have, you're right, they have. That's, and, and you hate to say it, I mean, they, they know the danger in that, but at the same time, that's about the only thing available. I was just getting ready to say, it's, it's, it's the only option right now because of the length of OG, so. First shot from Lentz goes off the mark. And huge crowd from Ottawa Glendorf here. This is the lid lifter. We got two tonight, Jerry, and the first one, we've got OG and Elmwood. The night cap brings LCC and Bluffton out, which should be another fantastic game right here on WOSN. This is Colin White, dribble drive to the foul line. Jumper goes up, and he's fouled on the shot. And he goes off the back iron. Yes, he got fouled. Yes, he's going to go to the free throw line and probably hit two. But at the same time, look how hard he had to work for Absolutely. That. They were all over. You watch here on the Beckman Jewelers instant replay. And he goes up, and they are all over him. First shot on the way, and it's good. Colin White, he's got nine on the night. Mentioned that we have a nightcap, you know, coming up after this one. But that's one of the things when you say tournament time. You know, it's really cool when you see the other teams walk That's in. That's right. There's just something <laughs> about so, it, you know? You're so – what's cooler is when you're one of the kids walking in, you can hear the crowd inside, yes, yes. and you know how exciting this is. Yep. There's a near – oh, there's a steal. Steck Schulte gets it back. They try to go inside the mag. Mag's double teamed, and they'll go Schrader on the outside. This is Steck Schulte. Back to Schrader. Trader goes into Mag at the high post. Mag turns, kicks it back out. Steck showing a three ball on the way. Off the mark. Mag gets a rebound. Tries to go back out. He'll kick it back out to Steck Schulte from the left side. And it's good. And he's fouled. Hunter Steck Schulte knocks in the triple. And he's going to go to the line for, I dare I say it, Jerry, a four-point yes. play. Good patience that time, though, too, by Ottawa Glendorf. Again, I keep saying it, but they've had to work for everything, and they just keep the ball moving. And, and there you see it on the Beckman Jewelers instant replay, and he clearly was fouled. And Ty Traxler is going to take a timeout. we got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. Beckman Jewelers is our instant replay sponsor. So there you saw, Jerry, they were double teaming Mag on the low post, and they do a great job of finding the open player. And there you saw Hunter Stexually knock it down. And you know, I, I like the fact, too, that none of those players are afraid to take that three either. And they must have said the shot or the foul was after the shot because he didn't go to the line. OG gets the ball back. And Colin White takes the three ball, and he misses off the mark. 
So I thought he was going to the line. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I think so did the OG faithful. Elmwood's going to take it out right in front of us. This is Landry Cedor, the 5'11 freshman. Gets it over to Cade Lentz. They'll go back to Cedor from the middle of the floor. Cedor breaks the pressure, but he's going to be double teamed on the wing. They go underneath the tracks. Their tracks are back out the lens. Three ball on the way and off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Titans. Here Just comes. didn't quite have his hands ready to shoot or bobbled it a little bit. You could tell that. Or I think it would have hit it. Stack Schulte with a nice dribble drive, and he's defended on the play by number 23, Jackson Childress. Here comes Lentz again down the left side. He gets double teamed up top, and a near steal by Mag. You know, 38-17, Jerry, and OG is playing as hard as they played in the first half. There's no quit in these guys. No, there isn't. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. You know, and it, it talked about, you know, the physicalness of the game and, you know, everything it would take. And, boy, they're just – they both teams played so physical all through this. And there's that walk, Jerry. Here comes yeah. uh, Lima Central yeah. Catholic as they come into the gym. So they'll have a huge crowd on tap tonight, as will Bluffton in the second game here from the Elida Fieldhouse. You know, what is it? I guess I give my age away a little bit. We talk about tournament time, but we talk about tournament time and the different things, you know, and you just know when you're when you're around basketball so much, the shadows are a little different right now. You know what I mean? Days are a little longer. Yeah. Uh, some, uh, God rest his soul, but Dick Krause, told me a long time ago his two sons are coaching at Archbold, Patrick Henry said, oh, yeah, and there are a lot of dead skunks on the road. I said, what? <laughs> it's it's uh, skunk mating season. <laughs> so now I don't go anywhere. I don't see a dead skunk on the road, and I know it's tournament time. There's Gage Lentz knocks yep. in the little jumper there. He's got 13 to lead Elmwood, and it's 38-19. I always say that the – when you pull up to a gym and we're broadcasting every weekend and you see the crowds outside, and you yeah. talked about it earlier, yeah. the faithful line up hours before the game, and that, that to me is what high school basketball is. There is a nice, nice dribble move. drive there by Caden Erford there, and he knocks in the deuce. Erford's got nine for the Titans. Coming into the uh, gym tonight, we saw the Ottawa Glendor people in line. I think they were there at about 1 o'clock. Nicest people you know, in the world. They, they all sure wanted to were. talk to us, and that they was a great sure time were. out there. <laughs> Here comes Colin White. As he tries to go baseline, he's going to be fouled by Hayden Wickard. And everywhere Colin White goes, Elmwood's focused on him. He's just got a little smile on his face. Yeah. Not frustrated at all. He understands the bigger picture. The team's yes, up 21. Does. Yep. So Erford will trigger the ball in for the Titans right here in front of our booth. You know, too, when you're uh, Colin White and, you know, you have so much attention on you and, you know, a lot of focus, you've got to learn how to handle that. Not every player can. And he Absolutely. does a great job. There's a three ball by Erford on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Steckshawty and great job. Hunter Steckshawty, right place at the right time, and he puts it back in to make it 42-19 on the outdoor scoreboard. Look at those hands. Just look at the – oh, yeah, there you go. There's a great steal by White. He goes back to number 12. <laughs> Levi Unterbrink, and they all know where each other is on the floor. It's just a, a symphony. It's amazing yep. to watch the Titans play. You know, that's one of those. I used this term before. And, you know, the, in a press like this, it's like sooner or later we're going to get you. Absolutely. And that's exactly what they really – that's the way that works. There's Lentz from the three-ball line. He misses off the mark. Rebound comes down to He outlets it to Erford. Erford goes up, and the ball's stripped away by Cade Lentz. It'll go back to the Titans with 4.13 to go in the third quarter. Kind of notice the flow a little bit right now is that, you know, it's almost like Elmwood saying, okay, we got to get this back, you know. And <laughs> I get it. I get it. But you also then you're seeing Ottawa Glandorf get the chance to just get out and go a little bit. Here's the Titans. I go it's Hunter Steckshulte from the three, and it's good. Hunter Steckshulte knocks in the triple, make it 47-19. Steckshulte's got 15 to lead the Titans. There's another timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division that involves seamless spouting. So if you're enjoying this programming and thinking about donating, do so by going to WTLW.com and donate tonight. And we love bringing you high school basketball. And if you look at our schedule, we've got just tons of games for your viewing pleasure. You know, 100 steps, yeah, leads the Titans right now with 15. And 
that last out of bounds play. You wonder why they set him up on that out of bounds play and go to him. That's his third three <laughs> on the night. Absolutely, he's got 15 to lead the Titans. And uh, you, you look at uh, Colin White's got 10, Erford's got nine, stexual has got 15, and they just keep coming at you. And he, even there, you look at uh, number 12, Levi Underbrink's got four, and Theo Mag's got a couple. So just a lot of guys scoring in a lot of different ways. I think that sixth grade manager on the end of the bench has four. <laughs> he might get in the game here yeah. tonight. We'll have to wait and see. Not because it's a blowout. It's no. just because they use so many of their players. Cade Lentz tries to go baseline, gets the shot up, and he's going to be fouled. And they're going to get number 11, Theo Mag, on the foul. That's his second, team third. I saw some big question go out this week about should junior high kids be allowed to play high school basketball, you know, or high school sports? Nope, not in Ohio. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just Jerry, you know. I, I saw a, a post on social media today, and I want to get your thoughts about this. I saw a couple of students from Lima City Schools were playing in a junior high state all-star game. That. And I just want to get your, you know, look, I'm proud of the kids. They're doing great. Yeah. But is it too early, uh, you know? Well, you know, when I start seeing second graders being ranked in the nation, <laughs> and there's some truth to that. You don't want your sports. grandson to be ranked as yeah, a second right. grader? <laughs> no, you know what? I'm, I'm more concerned that my grandson and younger kids get turned off sure. because they're not included at that age. Yeah. You and know it, what I mean? And I, I'm a big one. You know, I don't sure. get into it now, but there's something called the Aspen Institute's Project Play, which I've been very connected to uh, through the last couple of years. My son's foundation gives some money to it. But of turning kids off at a younger age because of the cost and everything sure. else and, you know, all that travel. So, yeah, uh, hey. if we need to fill up the next 20 minutes, I could talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> there you see Colin White with a dribble drive on the left side, and he is fouled as he went to the rim. White goes to the free throw line for two. 6'6", six, six, junior. He's got 10 points on the night, second one on the way, and that one's off the mark. And a great rebound there by Levi Unterbrink. Gets the ball back to Erford and a nice spin. Move. Are you kidding me? Caden Erford, the 6'4 junior, knocks in the deuce to make it 49-20. Erford's got 11 on the night. So they'll stay in that press. And they'll really pressure Cade Lentz as he brings the ball up, tries to go up the left side. And what a nice, nice move. What, what a, a nice yeah. move. You're absolutely right, Jerry. That was really nice on the left side. So there you see why that young man is a 1,000-point scorer. Here's Mag with a dribble drive and a nice little reverse. Are you kidding me? Theo Mag, the 6'7 senior with an up and under. We just saw a highlight on both ends of the court. That, that was a fan. You heard the crowd screaming, Theo. So Theo Mag with a fantastic move, a reverse layup there, makes it 51-22 with 2.45 to go on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. There's a five-second call as Hayden Wickard was having trouble up top. And i got to be honest with you, I'd have trouble against that yes. pressure. Entering the game now for Elmwood, number 13, Allen Sterling. A 5'10 senior averages 1.4 a game. And I was just thinking with Hayden Wickard, you know, bringing the ball up the court, did such a good job of handling it coming up the court. Sure. And then, boy, it just it just stays in the quarter court, though, or half court, that they just continue that pressure. And swing the ball up to Levi Unterbrink. Unterbrink back to Erford. Three ball the way. It's good. There you see the sharpshooter, Cade Nerford, the 6'4 junior. He's got 14 on the night, and OG leads 54 22 on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. There's another steal from the Titans as they just keep amping the pressure. Stick Schulte from the right side, and it's good. Hunter Stick Schulte with another triple. Stick Schulte's got 18 to lead all scores. It's all on display, Jerry. It's all on display. Yeah. And Traxler's going to take a timeout for the Elmwood Royals. So with 1.59 to go, the OG Titans lead 57-22. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphi. It's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. You know, Jerry, I said at the uh, selection show that you and I were so graciously invited to do, I said that's a great sponsor for a foul shot. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Exactly <laughs> right. That's a dad joke, Jerry. <laughs> The guys in the truck are going, just call the game, Danny. Yeah. Just call the game. <laughs> Tell you what, you're right. I was very blessed to be included in that, too. <laughs> it was a lot of show. fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. <laughs> WSN, they do a lot of great things, and that's one of the best they do is the selection show. 
So here come the Royals down 57-22. Cade Lentz takes the ball up. Rebound comes down to Mag as he high points it off the board. Here's Colin White. He'll kick it back out. Here's Erford from the wing. Off the mark. On a big time rebound by Theo Mag. He just snagged that out of the air. Puts it back in. Theo Mag's got six on the night. I was waiting for the Theo chant. <laughs> we just heard it. They love the Theo. They love Theo Mag. 125 to go, Elmwood down 59-22. They'll swing it back to the corner. This is Hayden Wickard, dribble drive. Nice drive. And a nice shot there by Hayden Wickard for the Royals. Wickard's got six on the night, it's 59-24. Colin White goes middle, kicks it back out, tried to go down to Theo Mag. Everywhere Colin White goes, you see an Elmwood defender, and he's really working hard for his points tonight. And you notice there, though, even, you know, he's picked up on the paint, yep. you know, very physical, dishes it off. I, I, that, that speaks volumes for that young man. So Colin White will go to the line, the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. And that clock continues to run. If you're noticing that, we've got a running clock because of the point differential at 35 points. That clock will continue to run the rest of the time. It's at 35. That's hard to see that, isn't it? It I, is. It really so is. That's so difficult, you know. To it is. White with the second one. He knocks it in. Colin White. Has 12 on the night, and it's 61-24. Cade Lentz will bring it down against the OG defense. He's guarded by Hunter Steckscholdy out top. And you see Steckscholdy just, you see the look on his face. Yeah. He, he takes defense really personal. And I love, there's a steal by White. White kicks it up to Erford. Erford takes it in. Left-handed layup and knocks it in. Cade Erford having a fantastic night. He's got 16 on the night. You know, if you've got the athletes like they do to press, I'll say that may be good. If you've got the athletes to press like that, you just love playing. <laughs> Absolutely. So after three quarters from the Atlanta Fieldhouse, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans lead the Elmwood Royals 63-24. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. Beckman Jewelers is our instant replay. So Ottawa Glendorf getting lots of instant replay and some fantastic highlight plays. And Coach... McLaughlin has cleared the bench. Entering the game now for Ottawa Glandorf is number 10, Brad Mag, number 14. And I'm gonna have to, I don't have a 14 on my roster, Jerry. I do not either. <laughs> I do not either. I'm very sorry about that, sorry, too. Sorry, right? absolutely. Number 32, Dave Westrick is in the game, as is number 12, Levi Unterbrink. Number one, Ty Buckland. So here come the Titans up 63-24. There's a dribble drive to the middle of the floor. Little reverse shot, off the mark. The rebound comes down to the Royals. That was Levi Unterbrink with the shot attempt. And they'll go back to Cade Lentz. He's guarded by Unterbrink out top. This is Hayden Wickard. Lentz has 16 to lead the Royals. He's a junior, so he'll be back next year. And he's earned every one of those. Absolutely. Fairly young team from Elmwood is sophomore and freshman. There's a nice shot from the side. And that's Hayden Wickard. Knocks in the deuce. Wickard's got eight on the night. Makes it 63-26. Nice dribble drive there. And nice job by Brad Mag off the right side as he bulls his way in for two. And Mag's got four on the night. He makes it 65-26 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. You know, the greatest thing, too, is when you bring some players off the bench like that, and they've gotten a lot of playing time on the year. I usually keep track of how many games they've played, you know, been in. But you always have a veteran or two in there with them. Absolutely. And that just keeps everybody in, in. That's really helpful to the younger guys. So number one is Ethan Metzger. We'll recognize him. I've just got that handed to me. So Ethan Metzger in the game now for Ottawa. So... We apologize for not having that up. So a running clock here with 6.21 to go. As I say that, it goes down to 6.18, so yeah. I probably I can get the clock out. There's going to be a foul as we've got a foul in the middle of the floor, and they're going to say that's a charge. That foul, excuse me, that foul will go against Levi Unterbrink. That's his third, and he's got four points on the night. In the game now for Elmwood is number four, Tommy Curtis, a 5'10 senior. 
Hey, you know, Jerry, a lot of these kids in a losing effort, these seniors that are coming in the game now, they'll never forget this. No, they I, won't. I, I never forgot my last game as a high yep. school player. I never, and I'll never, I can tell you exactly what happened, what the score, I can tell you everything. Yep. It just stays with you. And it meant so much to me to play in that game. Oh, and there's a nice a, move. Nice what? job. <laughs> Cade Lentz with another dribble drive. And, boy, you're seeing his athleticism on display, Jerry. You know, too, I mean, some of these players, like right now on the court, they don't recognize it's their last game. They don't think right, about that. Right. And boy, when they get on that bus on the way home. Oh, it hits you. Which we see a great move that time inside by Cade Lentz, controlling his body and getting the foul. But yeah, you know, there'll be a lot of tears after this game, I can tell sure. you. Lentz knocks in the free throw, and he's got 19 to lead the Royals. There's a nice jumper from the corner, and there you see. There you go. Grady Tomasas knocks it in. The 5'11 sophomore. Nice jumper there, Jerry. Yes, it was. Just as smooth as could be. Absolutely. So with 4.34 to go, Elmwood will sub again. Entering the game now for the Royals is number 13, Alan Sterling, and number 23, Jackson Childress. And it looks like they have taken Cade Lentz out of the game, and he gets a well-deserved applause from the Elmwood faithful. So that young man has a big future as he is only a junior, so he'll be back next year leading this program. Hayden Wickard uh, came out of the game, too. He got a big hand. Absolutely. Well-deserved. 6'4", senior. As Elmwood tries to close the gap in this one, down 67-29. So, Jerry, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that district that OG is going to go into, but it is absolutely yes, it loaded. Is. And I can't wait for WSN to get a cover of that because it is loaded. Ottawa, Glendorf, Spencerville. I could just go on with yep. all the teams. There's a nice breakout there. And number, looks like number 32 for the Titans. Dave Westrick is fouled as he's pulled down on the floor. I've already called in sick for all the guys that were scheduled to do that game. So yeah, I could get on right. it, you know, so. <laughs> Tough disguise in my voice all that time. Yeah, nice you, pass I, here. Do that. And here you see Otto Glenner up 67-29. And Dave Westrick, who's played a lot of basketball tonight, is running the floor like they're down 10, yes. which is a great testament to that young man as Westrick knocks that one in. You know, they all know what they have to do. They all know they've got a job to do. They just do it. Absolutely. You know, and I just, again, you know, look, they're up almost, what, 40? And, and – you don't see any expression on them like, I mean, they play the game at one level, and it's it's up here. Absolutely. So he knocks in both of those and makes it 69-29. As Elmwood brings in Landry Seedorf, they bring in number 22, Zach Gross. Number 24, Evan Beringer. Number five, Lucas Beringer. And number 10, Griffin Piper. You know, I know we have headsets on, Danny, but I haven't heard anything from our fans tonight, you know, about, you know, again, I know I've got the headsets sure. on, but but uh, give them credit. Oh, absolutely. Meaning I haven't heard anything bad. Absolutely. You, you, Ottawa Glendorf has got their site completely full over here, and they are. They, they understand the game. Yes, they, they, they really do. They're smart basketball fans, as are the Elmwood faithful. And, hey, look, they, they, they knew the, the odds coming out here tonight, but they still brought a nice crowd to support their kids. And here you see the Bluffton faithful coming in and Lima Central Catholic coming in. And you got a, another great contest. There's a little jumper from the right side, number 24 for the Royals. That was Evan Beringer. Ball comes down. This is Ethan Metzger. They'll swing it around the right side. Rebound on the way, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Griffin Piper. He gets it out to Zach Gross. You know, you see a lot of younger players when they get in the game, you know, especially when they're leading like this. I want to score, I want to score. <laughs> right. No, they're just still moving the ball <laughs> like they do in practice. I mean, there's a steal out top. This is Grady Tomasas. Gets it inside, and a nice job by Ethan Metzger to run the floor. Metzger gets on the board. He's got two on the night. OG leads 71-29 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Did you hear the kids when he scored? They appreciate the yep. effort from a bench player coming in. 
We're down under one minute. Elmwood moves the ball on the outside. Tries to go baseline. Shots blocked by number 14. Peyton Kuhlman, number 14 in the game for Ottawa Glandor. This is number 22 out top. Zach Gross with the ball. Tries to go to the foul line. Three ball from the top of the key on the way. That's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Titans, and they'll bring it down the floor with five seconds to go, and they're just going to hold it right there. So that'll do it from the Elida Fieldhouse. The Ottawa Orlando Titans defeat the Elmwood Royals 71-29. We'll be back right after these messages. Back here at the Elida Fieldhouse with our Stolly Hustle Orbiter. You can check out our highlights on our YouTube channel, WOSN. Hunter Stecksholdy is our Stolly Hustle Orbiter. Congratulations on a big night tonight. Thank you. You were shooting the ball really well. Your teammates were finding you. You like that role a little bit? Oh, yeah. I always love getting open shots and just making my role helping for the team. Yeah. And I want to ask you, you guys were up big tonight, and I said during the broadcast, the intensity on your face on defense, I love that. You guys thrive on that. Yeah, I thought we were playing a little slow at first, but I know we had to change something and get the team going. Yeah, when you play with a player like Colin White and everybody gets involved, and I heard your coach earlier this week talking about you guys are so much better when everybody's involved. You feel that way? Yeah, I, I love when everybody's involved, everybody's doing their own thing. Well, congratulations. You're on to the districts, and uh, good luck next week. Thank you. All right, we're going to bring in Coach McLaughlin here. And, Coach, look, you know, on paper, you guys were the favorite tonight, and everybody knew that. Did you work on keeping the kids motivated this week? Oh, we tried. It didn't look like it if you watched the first <laughs> half of that game. But, uh, you know, you got to give Elmwood a lot of credit. They came in there, you know, as, a, as an underdog, and they came out ready to play. And uh, you know, that's, a, that's a credit to Coach Traxler and those guys. Um, we got off to a real sluggish start. And, uh, you know, it's all right. You got to learn from that. And, you know, we talked to our guys after the game. At this point of the year, it's just about survive in advance. Uh, we'll take a look at that film, and, uh, you know, we'll be ready to go next week. And next week, let's talk a little bit about that. That district is an absolutely juggernaut. Have you talked to your kids about how tough that's going to be? I think our kids know that. They're well aware of, you know, the success of those programs. And, you know, I think our guys are just excited about having another opportunity to play. And, uh, and, and you know, obviously in February, but heading into March, that's the most important thing. Another day of practice, another game, whatever it is, you know, we're excited for the challenge. Well, Coach, congratulations. On to the district. OG Titans with another big win.